Hi, uh, welcome to part two of, uh, of Psalm 23. If you've suddenly gone part two, um, there is a part one from two days ago uh, posted online. Um, I recommend, please, please go back to that first and then come back here to part two. It'd be great to see you again. And again, it is actually Friday the 15th of May as I record this section. Let me read to you from uh, verses 4 to 6 of Psalm 23. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me, your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honour me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. At verse 4. As we know, it can read also, even when I walk through the dark valley of death, or through the darkest valley. And for many, uh, maybe watching this now, uh, the dark valley of death has they have been walking through. The death of a loved one has literally overshadowed them with darkness. Or maybe yourself, you were very close to it through through this illness recently, or, or just generally full stop, and it can feel like the darkest moments. Or even with these things, the, the darkest moments could be darkest moments maybe of, of feelings of depression, mental anguish, emotional turmoil, anything really that connects with our feelings or our experience and reality and yet the psalm here states that even though I'm walking through this darkest valley I will not be afraid because the reality is is that God is right beside you may not feel like it, but the reality is that God is right beside you. He, he's absolutely right there. I suppose the problem is, I know for myself, and in the years gone by, and as I've learnt in this walk with God, I have this problem. I seem to focus on the darkness rather than the reality that the Lord of Light is actually right beside me. It doesn't deny your feelings and that they're there, but we have to put our feelings, or I have had to put my feelings in check with the reality that the Lord is right there, knowing exactly where this dark valley is going. Knowing exactly where ultimately the end of the valley is. That, that's one of the things I've learned. I'm hoping you might well learn here is in the midst of this, the Lord can actually guide you out of the valley. Now, sometimes, unfortunately, the valley uh, we have to be in for some time. Because actually it's in the valley where we are really can't see much beyond uh, ourselves. Because it's so dark, we can't see beyond ourselves. It's actually there that we're not being distracted by... Uh, everything else and it's there that in that dark valley that the Lord is able to turn around and comfort us because we're not looking for other things to comfort us it's only the Lord we end up looking towards when we remember he's right there and normally we remember he's right there because we're actually starting to really call out for him because we can't find anything else and maybe for you, that you're afraid still, uh, or you've, you've, as I said, you've, you've, you've got a lost one, loved, lost one. Um, the Lord is right with you. Be, be calling out to him. You, you don't have to search hard for him. He knows exactly where 
you are. He knows exactly where you are because he's right beside you. And I just want to focus on that in that verse 4, that the Lord is right beside you. And I believe that as I'm recording this today, there are some that today need to hear that the Lord is really right beside you. So do not be afraid. And then I love this bit in verse 5. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. Now, normally Psalm 23 is clearly attributed to David, and he, as we know, as the king, had, had lots of enemies, both internally and externally. And when the Lord prepares a feast uh, in the presence, what the Lord is saying is, well, look, uh, actually, David here is my honoured my honored child, and he's having the feast, and you enemies are going to just look on and go, he's getting all the great grub. Now, you may not have any enemies at the moment, but, but the, the sense to me here is the Lord wants to prepare a feast for us all. Um, I don't know why, but I, I think it's by Pink, that song, um, I'm Coming Up, Get the Party Started. Um, and I can't remember the rest of it, other than always that lyric. And it always feels like to me that I'm going, I'm coming up, Lord, better get the party started. And it feels like the Lord is saying, um, I've already got the party started. Here is the feast. It's already there. <laughs> just come and sit and enjoy and I think the Lord wants to say to you, come and feast on him. Come and enjoy the feast with him. Come and enjoy the feast with him. He's already got it prepared, so come and enjoy. Come and enjoy the spiritual feast that he's got for you. He loves to lavishly serve uh, the feast to you. So come, so even though... You might feel like you're in the darkest valley, come up, because actually he's got some feast and he's got some stuff to give you that you're going to just take because you actually can't see it otherwise, but you're going to enjoy it. Come and enjoy the feast. And then this other bit. You honour my me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. And again, it's a part of that sense of, of a feast. It's that sense of it almost feels like to me, like uh, almost like communion, I suppose. You know, uh, we feast on the bread and, and we drink of the wine. And it's this, this, the idea of the image, when I read this, the image of this cup, and I was trying to imagine the idea of, of, um, of somebody, you know, sort of pouring into my cup my choice of drink, whatever that be, whatever that be. And it could be anything from water, uh, all around and all different kinds of drink it could be lemonade it could be coke it could be whatever you want it to be and the idea for me now normally i don't know about you but normally have you ever had it where it spilled over the cup and what's your immediate reaction the minute you know you're it's spilling you're, oh no look and it's gone everywhere it's gone over the table on the floor and it's like going over you and you're going oh what a waste what a waste and you stop and oh you get all like Argh! and like frustrated and messy and all that sort of thing. And I realise the rest of this, that my cup overflows with blessings. So as the Lord's pouring into this, the cup in the image, when the cup is actually really you anyway, but he's pouring it and it's overflowing, it's spilling. When you know it's of the Lord, you ain't gonna move, are you? You don't care. And the Lord doesn't care that it's overfilling. He doesn't care that it's spilling everywhere because it's his desire to give you all these blessings spiritual blessings to give you comfort blessings to give you uh, even yes yeah, sometimes material blessings to provide but mainly i think that god wants to give us spiritual blessings to give us peace strength renewal power authority that just is overflowing so not that we're going to stop you know if the lord's pouring out you're not going to stop are you going to go yeah keep going more more yeah i'm more more keep going you want it to be and i think the lord's saying come on i want to give you more so come up to this feet come and be with me let me just keep pouring and pouring these blessings upon you don't focus on the darkness focus on the blessings focus on the feast focus what i have for you says the lord and then this verse six Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. I want to read just that passage again, that particular last verse from the, uh, the Passion Translation. It would say in verse 6, So why would I fear the future? Let me say that again. So why would I fear the future? 
for your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be forever with you. And I love that. I absolutely love that. The Lord's goodness and love pursues you. It's not that earlier on, if you remember in part one, I talked about how we follow the shepherd down the path. Well, actually, the shepherd also pursues us. He's right behind us. He's, he's trying to get our backs as well. And he does that all of our days. It may not feel like it, but the reality is that he does. So why do we fear the future? When the Lord has got us encompassed all the way around and he's wanting to say, more blessing, more blessing, more blessing, more blessing, more feasting, more feasting on me. Come, come. In this reflection on this psalm, I'm asking you to recognise that the Lord doesn't just give us grass. But he gives us the choicest of salads, if you're a vegetarian. In my case, the choicest of meats. And he wants to pour it, the blessings, all over you. Why would I not want to come up to the party? Because at the end of all of this, when my life is over, I know I'm going to be in his glorious presence. And so all of those who follow Jesus Christ. So if I know that eventually I'm going to be in his glorious presence, why would I not want to be in his glorious presence now, as in spending time with him now, allowing him to fill his blessings into me now? Actually, I realise how much this psalm is not just about feeling peaceful, but it's also about being blessed in abundance, way beyond what we can cope and handle, we can almost swim in it. So after this talk, I want you to go back to part one if you want to, but most certainly after this talk, spend time with the Lord. As I said earlier on, when an animal wants to be fed by a shepherd, they don't deny the food that's being offered. They just take it in great guzzles. The Lord is offering you the choicest of feasts, the massive cup of blessings. So just go and take it in, eat and guzzle on it, because the Lord is with you and wants to be with you. God bless you.